to today's Open Your Eyes People broadcast. I'm your host, Evangelist Anita Rivera. Uh, I want to bring to you a special report or a specific report concerning the continent of Africa. Check this report out. I find it fascinating. I believe it has a lot to do about the end times. It's significant to Bible prophecy. Look at the report. It says the following, Africa is splitting in two creating dozens of volcanoes creating dozens of volcanoes all right so the report goes as follows the modern geography of earth is created by the plate tectonic engine that runs in our planet what we see as familiar maps today would have looked very differently 50 million years ago 500 million years ago 3 billion years ago of course that would depend on on your on your position concerning the uh you know the life uh, span of earth and how how old it is uh but we're not talking about that right now we're talking about again africa splitting in two uh now Again, the modern geography of Earth is created by the plate tectonic engines that runs in our planet, and that's because the continents shift over time at rates of centimeters per year. Now, this might not seem like much, but over geologic time, that means that they can collide and separate multiple times. So they're trying to claim this as a natural phenomenon, but I don't think it's, I don't think it's natural. I believe it's a major sign of uh, the last days. And, you know, it's a major sign of the fact that we're living in the end times and that the day of the Lord is at hand, that truly time is up. Now it says here, at some points in Earth's history, we had supercontinents when all the land masses were one. Today, we're almost at the opposite end of the spectrum with many continents far apart. Currently, we only have one location where a continent is busy splitting itself apart, and that's the East African Rift. This part of the African continent extends to the southwest from Eritrea and represents one part of a three-armed rift system. The other two parts have separated to the point where new ocean crusts have formed, creating what we know as the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden. This is the boundary between the African and the Arabian plates. However, now listen to this, the third arm has not produced any new ocean, at least not yet. Instead, we have a valley that extends into the heart of Africa where the continent is spreading apart, and this spreading likely started according to some experts some 25 to 30 million years ago when i say experts i mean they're they're you know they they work in the field of science but we go with the word of god and please understand that you know science is confirmed by the scriptures but it must line up with the scriptures if there's any science that claims itself to be science that claims itself to be a legitimate form of science but that but but that does not line up with the holy scriptures it's not science. And, 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 and the, you know, the Bible has a lot to say about that. Now, without, or excuse me, with the spreading of this, you know, with, you know, with Africa splitting in two, okay? Again, major, major, uh, you know, thing happening, a major phenomenon happening over in that continent. With that spreading comes volcanism. Again, it's going to create dozens of volcanoes. This uh, is a major sign of Bible prophecy. Volcanoes is Bible prophecy. It actually states it in the book of Acts chapter 2. Uh, it says that, uh, you know, the Lord himself decrees the following. Go with there with me. If you don't have your Bible, please, please, please get it. Because I'm going to lead you to a few portions of scripture concerning this report. Acts chapter 2 Verse 19, the word of God says, I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath. And then it says blood and fire and vapor of smoke. Blood, fire, and vapor of smoke are all, uh, th these are all significant to volcano eruptions. The earth beneath talks about literally the earth underneath. And so when volcanoes erupt, it erupts from underneath the ground from underneath the crust of the earth and so the lord is using volcanoes as a major sign of the second return of jesus christ and of the day of the lord now uh the bible also tells us uh that uh whosoever calls on the name of the lord shall be saved so during the times that we're living in we can call on the name of the lord we 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 are called to call on the name of the lord there is no other name in which man can be saved, the Bible says. Jesus himself said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father except through me. And so we 
we, we must prepare ourselves for the time is at hand. Now, when I think of an increase in volcanoes, uh, in volcanic activity, I think of the ring of fire. Now, this is not really near the ring of fire, but it's almost as if with the separating of the continent of Africa, literally splitting in two, it's as if there is now a second type of ring of fire because this will again create dozens of new volcanoes. And so, uh, you know, out of the mouth of every two or three witnesses, let every word be established. Again, we're living in the last days and the earth is moaning and groaning and laboring for the revealing of the sons of God. It is literally experiencing birth pangs as stated in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 8. Jesus said that these are all the beginning of sorrows when we see uh, the, you know, the signs that he himself declared in that portion of scripture, again, in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24. Now, uh, I, 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 I want to give you just a few uh, bit you know, a few more tidbits of information concerning this, this report. Again, Africa, if you're just, if you're just tuning in, we're talking about Africa uh, splitting in two, creating dozens of volcanoes. This is so significant to scripture. I look forward to getting into some specific scriptures. Again, let me give you some, some just, you know, a bit more of the, you know, of the report here. This, the East African rift is seen from space. Okay. So the Terra Modis image shows, and you can actually research this on, you know, your search engine, whatever you use, Mozilla, Google, or what have you. The Terra Modis image above, or excuse me, shows just how extensive the volcanism is. Volcanoes start in the Red Sea itself with islands like Zucor and Hanish. The, uh, it, now you have, uh, you know, off the coast of Yemen is Jabal al Tayer, which is a volcanic island that last erupted back in the year 2007, with lava flows reaching the sea. Now, once you head inland, you run into the beast of Irtir Ali with its active lava lake at the summit. The volcano is almost 60 miles from end to end. Lots of smaller cones on its slopes like Bora Al and Gada Al, having produced most of the lava flows. And Ali Bagu, on the other hand, is a basaltic volcano with a much more explosive history. Now... Just off the shores of the Red Sea is Dubi, which is a large stratovolcano that in, 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 in the year 1861 sent lava flows more than a dozen miles down its slopes, producing 19 craters at the summit and raining ash 180 miles from the volcano itself. And to the south at the border with Djibouti is Manda and Akhir, which has formed a new cinder cone during eruptions back in the year 1928 and in the year 1929. Now, a lot of things are happening over in the Middle East concerning the nation of Israel, concerning uh, false peace and safety. Jesus said that when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. So I believe that Africa, splitting in two, that this continent was chosen by the Lord for a few reasons. One is the fact that the continent itself, it literally is the shape of a human heart. And so when we see that Africa splitting in two, we can see a broken heart here. Now, God says in the Bible that he is near to those who have a broken heart and to those who have a crushed spirit. Uh, again, the earth is laboring right now. It is moaning. It is groaning. It is, it is waiting for the revealing of the sons of God. And as a matter of fact, I want to read to you that portion of scripture. Romans, go with, with me very quickly here to Romans chapter 8. Verse 18, because the Bible says, for I consider, now this is the Apostle Paul being led by the Spirit of God to share with us the following. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly awaits for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to fertility. Not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know, we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. So this is a major sign of the times this continent that is the shape of the human heart, the continent of Africa splitting in two, is a sign of the birth pangs that creation is going through. 
Now I want to give you some more scripture concerning this. Go with me uh, to the book of Numbers chapter, chapter 30. Because I believe that the Lord is telling us that this brokenness of the continent of Africa, which again represents the human heart, uh, is the Lord's way of telling us uh, that um, there is rebellion in the land. Now, I said in, um, in the book of Numbers chapter 30, verse 32, I mean in the book of Numbers chapter 16, and we're going to read from verse 30 through 32, because when I also read this report, it reminded me of the sons of Korah. It reminded me of when the Lord himself did something new. And it was not in a good way. Uh, it, it, it glorified him, but it was, it, was, it was terror to the people. And again, the day of the Lord is at hand. We really need to give heed to the word of God here. Okay, so Numbers chapter 16, verse 17, or excuse me, Numbers chapter 16, verse 30 says the following. It says, but if the Lord creates a new thing and the earth opens its mouth and swallows them up with all that belongs to them and they go down alive into the pit, then you will understand that these men have rejected the Lord. Now it came to pass as he finished speaking, talking about Moses, that all these words that the ground split apart under them and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them up with their households and all the men with Korah with all their goods. So they and all those with them went down alive into the pit. The earth closed over them and they perished from among the assembly. Then all of Israel who were around them fled at their cry for they said, lest the earth swallow us up also. And a fire came out from the Lord and consumed the 250 men who were offering incense. So here, I actually have a soundbite I'd like to share with you all concerning this continent splitting in two. And then I have some more scripture. Uh, let me go to the soundbite here very quickly. Give me one moment. Okay, here it is. CBS News reported the following. A giant crack appearing in the ground in Kenya, seemingly overnight. Now, of course, they have, you know, their rhetoric to not cause alarm or panic. Thank the Lord for open your eyes, people, where we can bring to you what the Bible has to say as being watchmen on the wall and obeying the words of Jesus Christ, where he said, what I tell you, I tell all, watch. Here it is. And um, a massive crack in the ground that's estimated to be up to 50 feet deep has opened up in Kenya seemingly overnight. The crack stretches along Kenya's Great Rift Valley, and many scientists believe it could end up splitting the continent apart. Deborah Pata is tracking developments from Johannesburg, South Africa. Imagine waking up one morning to find a massive crack running in your home. That's what happened to Elliot in Jaguna, forced to dismantle his house by hand before it was lost to the earth below. He lives in Mai Mahu, part of the Great Rift Valley in Kenya, a region that has already provided a treasure trove of some of the most important archaeological finds in history. And this latest discovery is so significant, scientists predict it will be the fault line along which history is made once again as Africa splits into two continents. Although that won't happen for a very long time, says geologist Ben Andrews. Fortunately, this does not occur instantly. So it's good. We're, we're many tens of millions of years away from having two continents. I just, you know, for some reason, I just don't believe that we're tens of millions of years away from us having two continents. Uh, it is clear that the continent of Africa is breaking apart for a reason. Again, I'm, my, I'm matching it to biblical prophecy. So I just, I, you know, I say this respectfully to the person who, who, you know, who believes that enough to share it with us. But I have to bring it to you from a biblical standpoint that this is a major sign of the times that we're living in. Again, concerning the day of the Lord at hand and God's heart being broken. Uh, you know, God, uh, you know, please understand that the continent of Africa, many, many nations in Africa is part of the Bible. You know, you know, I say specifically concerning the old covenant in, in, in the Old Testament, you know, Ethiopia, Egypt, uh, you know, Sudan and, and, and more. Uh, there, there are many nations that, uh, you know, that, that, that is, you know, significant 
uh, to God. It is significant to biblical history, and it is definitely significant and important concerning Bible prophecy. So that coupled with the fact that the continent of Africa is the shape of a human heart, and it's literally broken. <laughs> it's split in two. Uh, it, it, it shows a broken heart, that God's heart is broken. And we need to give... We need to give attention. We need to pay attention to this because God is speaking. When he has a broken heart, God is not one to just feel sorrow or sympathy for himself. He gets angry and because something broke his heart that didn't need to break it. And, um, you know, we, you know, we, you know, there are many people who are, who are approaching God with a false, you know, a false love. You know, oh, what can we do to make you feel better? Uh, and and it's, a, it's a reproach onto him and it becomes a shame onto you. So, uh, because it, it's very dishonoring to him. We try to, you know, it's, it, it becomes a mocking and scoffing. Unless you are led by the Spirit of God, unless you know that God is spirit and those who worship him must worship him in, in spirit and in truth, you're going to be held in contempt. You're going to be held in judgment based on, on, on even going to him. Um, from that standpoint, uh, you know, out of an uh, impure heart. Uh, it, it, again, we're living in the last days. This is a major sign of the end times. Um, let me share a little bit more of the report here with, with the soundbite. And then I want to get some more into scripture. Crack in Kenya sits along the 3,700 mile long East African rift. Geologists say that rift is growing larger as two tectonic plates move away from each other. As this movement continues over the next 50 million years, a large chunk of the continent will eventually split off, creating an island that will consist of parts of several African nations. Now please understand that a day with the Lord is a thousand years and a thousand years with the Lord is unto a day. That actually says that in, um, uh, make sure I'm saying it here, Peter. It says it here in 2 Peter, Chapter 3, uh, verse 7. But the heavens and the earth, which are now preserved by the same word, are reserved for fire unto the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But, beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And, and, you know, again, you, you know, we want to couple this with the, you know, with the words of Jesus that is found in the gospel of Matthew chapter 24, when he says that, uh, you know, for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. So again, they're putting out a 50 million year time frame that, you know, the, the remainder of this continent of Africa will be broken and, and the new ocean will come and it will, you know, kind of like represent a new heaven on, a, you know, on earth. And it does not. Um, this is happening quick. It is happening. <laughs> Uh, is creating, uh, you know, dozens of volcanoes, Africa splitting in two. And it's a major sign of the soon coming return of Jesus Christ in the day of the Lord. And again, God's heart being broken. Now, I want to read to you another portion of scripture, this time found in Psalm chapter 60. Go there with me. Psalm chapter 60, because the psalmist David, the psalmist David had an urgent prayer for the restoration of the favor of God. And so it says the following in verse one, oh God, you have cast us off. You have broken us down. You have, you have been displeased. The reason why God has broken us down is because he has been displeased. It says here, oh, restore us again. You have made the earth tremble. You have broken it. Folks, Africa has been it, it's splitting in two. The continent. This is, you know, you know, you know, you may say, oh, it's a normal natural phenomenon. No, it's not. It's like red water, blood red, you know, the water turning the color of blood red, the, you know, the sun going into darkness, the moon turning into blood. That's because the coming of the great and terrible day of the Lord our God is near. And Jesus himself said, when all these things begin to happen, look up, lift up your head for your redemption draweth nigh. Now again, it goes on to say here, Psalm chapter 60, verse 2, you have made the earth tremble, you have broken it. When we see the breaking of Africa, that is God himself breaking it. Heal its branches, for it is shaking. Something significant is going to happen over in the Middle East very, very soon. It's going to break, it's going to shake the world, and it's going to break many. 
Jesus himself said in the gospel of Matthew chapter 24 that I will show signs. Uh, he said He said that there will be fearful, uh, I want to make sure I'm saying this correctly, please forgive me. I said the gospel of Matthew chapter 24 is the gospel of Luke chapter 21. The gospel of Luke chapter 21 says, and there will be signs in the sun and the moon and in the stars and on the earth, a distress of nations. The, the, the continent of Africa splitting in, in, in two is a distress of nations prophecy happening in real time. It affects many nations in that continent. With perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them from fear and from the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Psalm chapter 60, verse 2, you have made the earth tremble, you have broken it, heal its branches for it is shaking, you have shown your people hard things, you have made us drink the wine of confusion. Boy, oh boy, if we're not in the age of confusion, the Bible tells us in the book of Daniel, another prophecy, it tells us that knowledge will increase in the last days. Many people say, oh, well, that's good. No, it's not. That's, an, that's from the knowledge of the tree of good and evil. That is confusion. We don't want confusion. There, there is a spirit of confusion that has been unleashed upon the planet. It is part of the Antichrist spirit. What manner of persons ought we to be in these last days? Well, we must be led by the spirit of truth. That will lead us and guide us into all truth. So there is hope. You don't have to be in the land of confusion. Multitudes, multitudes right now are in the valley of decision. You don't need to be in that valley. Once you have fully submitted and surrendered your entire life to Jesus Christ. Once you have fully submitted and surrendered every part of your spirit, soul, mind, and body. Every part of your being to the Lord Jesus Christ. So now you can be filled with the Holy Spirit. You can be led by the Holy Spirit. Again, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. You won't be led like the sons of Korah with that spirit of rebellion, which the Lord himself said that to have a rebellious spirit is, 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 is likened to witchcraft. You're not a witch. You're a child of God. You're to be led by the spirit of God in this time of confusion, in this time of peril, just as was spoken by the psalmist David, the chief musician... As we rightly divide the word of truth that is given to us now in these end times, this word of God. Now he goes on to say in Psalm chapter 60 verse 6, God has spoken in his holiness. The splitting of the continent of Africa in two, God is speaking in his holiness. He says, I will rejoice, I will divide Shechem and measure out the valley of Sukkot. Gilead is mine and Manasseh is mine. Ephraim also is a helmet for my head. Judah is my lawgiver. Moab is my wash pot. Over Edom I will cast my shoe. Philistia, shout in triumph because of me. I have another portion of scripture, a very fascinating portion here. Galatians chapter 4 verse 21. Galatians chapter 4, verse 21. It says the following. Now, with the splitting of Africa, it has great biblical significance, this consonant. Besides the fact that it's the shape of a human heart signifying that God's heart is broken, something has broken God's heart, something significant. Besides the fact that it, it represents birth pains, besides the fact that it represents rebellion and the earth splitting in two like he did during the time of, uh, you know, that, you know, that's reported in, in, in the book of Numbers. Uh, it also represents the following. It represents two covenants. Galatians chapter 4, verse 21 says, Tell me, you who desire to be under the law, do you not hear the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondwoman, the other by a free woman. But he who was of the bondwoman was born according to the flesh, and he of the free woman through promise. Which things are symbolic? For these are the two covenants, the one from Mount Sinai, which gives birth to bondage, which is Hagar. For this Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia and corresponds to Jerusalem, which now is an in and is in bondage with her children, but the, but the Jerusalem above is free, which is the mother of us all. For it is written, Rejoice, O barren, 
You do not bear, break forth and shout, you who are not in labor, for the desolate has many more children than she who has a husband. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are children of promise, but as he who was born according to the flesh, then persecuted him who was born according to the spirit, even so it is now, nevertheless, what does the scripture say? Cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of free. So this is a very significant prophecy concerning the times that we're living in. For the spirit of prophecy is, is a testimony of Jesus Christ. And so the splitting of the continent of Africa, God is saying, listen, you are in the time of decision. Behold, I set before you this day life and death, blessing and cursing. Choose life so that you and your descendants may live. We know that this continent is split by two, two doctrines. One that is of truth and one that is of a deceiving spirit. The continent of Africa has always been very close to God's heart. Again, uh, it, 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 is, it is biblically found. Okay, God himself used it in so many ways in the Old Testament. You could read the reports, you could read the scriptures on your own time concerning uh, the many nations that is, that is, you know, that is stated by Af uh, that is stated by God concerning the continent of Africa. We know that currently uh, Africa is held bound by, uh, you know, by, 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 you know, by the religion of Islam in many areas, not the entire continent, but in many areas, many nations in the continent of Africa is held by the religion of Islam. And it's, uh, and, and, and there are other areas that are free that is, uh, you know, that is held strongly by the scriptures of the Holy Bible. And there's a war waging for the souls of the Africans right now in that continent that many people do not understand. And so when we see Africa splitting in two, we see major birth pains, we see major anguish, we see laboring taking place. And there is a war for the souls of men, women, and children right now. We know that there is a great, um, great apostasy happening in many nations in that continent. We also know that there is much revival uh, not in, in the way that the Western world sees or believes or even defines revival, uh, but is, you know, it, it, it is true revival. It is authentic. It's holy. It's pure. It's significant to God. It matters to God. It, it, it's weighty on the scales before the courtroom of God concerning true revival that is happening in certain parts of Africa that is not showy, that doesn't look like a circus came in town, but it's revival of the human heart by the Spirit of God. That may be done in secret. For, for, for Jesus himself said, go into the secret place for what the Father sees in secret. He will reward you openly for. And there's a glory that is happening concerning the cross in many areas in that continent. Yet there is a war waging between the bondwoman and the free. Between those that are of Hagar, if you will, and those that are of the free woman, Sarah. And, 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 and the Lord is speaking. And he's, he's crying out to those who are trying to cling on to Hagar, is trying to cling on to the religion of Islam. Cast it out! Cast out the bondwoman and her son. Is given birth to sin. You have an opportunity, and as long as you have breath in your lungs right now, time is up. Understand that the day of the Lord is at hand. You can be saved. Give your life to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is not... Uh, you know, the God of the white people. He's not the God of, 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 the, of, the, of the men and women that are free over in that land of America. Jesus Christ is Lord over all the world, over all the earth. The Bible tells us in the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verse 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. When, 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 when Isaac was given by Abraham, when he was offered up as a sacrifice, as a living sacrifice, a ram came in its place. And God said, no, now I know, Abraham, that you fear me. This ram is going gonna, is gonna to be my, my current sacrifice. And it signifies and is symbolic of the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that will come in the fullness of time. And Jesus Christ came over 2,000 years ago in what is called the fullness of time as a suffering servant, as the only begotten Son of God, as the Lamb of God that was slain from the foundation of the world. If any man has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit of God is saying. 
Now you may say, okay, well, you know, I'm a missionary over in Africa, or, 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 or maybe you live in Africa, as, as, you know, and, 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 and you have generations that stem, uh, for, for, you know, you know, if, if, you know, since the beginning of time, if you will, and you say, listen, I, I, I'm saved by the blood of Jesus. I have confessed Jesus Christ as Lord, but my family will not. And, and, and they just hold on to the doctrine of Balaam. They, they refuse to let go of, of, of their ancient traditions of what they believe will save them. Well, then you stand fast. If you can just but stand fast, therefore in the liberty by which Christ has made you free, you do not become entangled again in a yoke of bondage, then by God's grace, somehow, somewhere, some way, God will, you, you, I, I really believe that God will see your house free. I really believe that when he says in the book of Acts that this salvation is extended onto you and to your children, and, and to as many as the Lord our God shall call, that his word is true. That God's word is true. That the spirit of God who spoke through those men, through those prophets of old, is true. You can read it here. Let me read, you know, let me, let me confirm that word to you. In first Peter, excuse me, in second Peter chapter one. Verse 19, it says the following. And so we have the prophetic word confirmed, which you do well to heed as a light that shines in a dark place. And so the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts, knowing this first, that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. For prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Now another portion of scripture I'd like to share with you. Concerning Africa splitting in two is found in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 13. Go there with me. The Gospel of Matthew chapter 13. I believe that in the splitting of this continent, being very significant according to the scriptures, is symbolic of the separation of the wheat and the tares. Uh, let's read starting in verse 24. It says the following. Another parable Jesus put forth to them saying, The kingdom of heaven... It's like a man who sowed good seed in his field, but while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the grain has sprouted and produced a crop, then the tares also appeared. So the servants of the owner came and said to him, sir, do you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tares? He said to them, an enemy has done this. The servant said to him, do you want us then to go and gather them up? But he said, no, lest while you gather up the tares, you also uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, first gather together the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. So I believe that the Lord is showing us that there is a separation happening of the wheat and the tares, of those that are of the Lord Jesus Christ, those that are true uh, servants of God, those who have been born again by God's Holy Spirit and, you know, compared versus those that have not, those that pose as wolves in sheep clothing, uh, those that pose themselves as being, uh, you know, servants of Jesus, but they're nothing but, uh, you know, unsaved, ungodly people. I want to further confirm that word found, uh, you know, this time found in First John. You go there with me very quickly to the book of First John. To the book of First John, chapter three, verse four. Africa splitting in two. Okay, I'm sharing with you all the report and I'm matching it to biblical prophecy. Okay, the Lord is telling us that there is a separation happening between the wheat and the tares. Let Africa be a, a, a signet for the world. Let it be a sign to the world. Let it be that the people of Africa, uh, you know, get their houses in order, but also that they become a light in this dark hour to the world to get their houses in order. Something significant, again, will happen in the Middle East very soon. First John chapter 3, verse 4. Uh, says, whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. And you know that he was manifested to take away your sins, and in him there is no sin. 
Whoever abides in him does not sin. Whoever sins has neither seen him nor known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested. I love this. The Son of... It says, for this purpose, because the devil is causing all sorts of havoc, all sorts of chaos. For this purpose, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, was manifested. That he might destroy the works of the devil. How wonderful is that? I love that. That, 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 is, that is God. And then it says here, verse 9, whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed, his seed remains in him, <clears throat> and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. Listen, uh, we must be born again. When we're born again, we, we receive a new heart of flesh. The heart of stone is removed. And, and, his, and his word, his law is written on our hearts. And now we can walk. We can rest in walking with the Lord. Knowing that the work is finished. Because our mind is being renewed daily by the spirit of God. Who now lives in us. Who rules and reigns in us. This is a powerful uh, uh, you know, promise. This is, this is a miracle that took place on the cross over 2,000 years ago. This is why we preach the gospel. This is why I preach. This is why preachers preach. It's to bring forth the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ to a lost and dying world. You don't have to be in your sin anymore. You can live. For the first time, you can live. All right, so there's more uh, reports here. Or I say reports, but more scripture I'd like to share with you. Uh, another a sign concerning Africa being split in two, uh, you know, regarding Bible prophecy, I believe, is that it is proclaiming the testimony of Jesus Christ. Go with me to the, uh, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24, uh, in verse 14, says the following, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. So I believe Africa splitting in two is testifying that the end is coming, that, that the day of the Lord is at hand, that we are to look up, lift up our head for, the, you know, for our redemption draweth nigh. And you may say, well, how? I don't understand. You know, only preachers preach. Yeah, but I believe that the world is preaching. I believe that, 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 that these tectonic plates are preaching. I believe that the earthquakes are preaching. I believe that that all that's happening, that people call bad news, but is really prophetic news, is preaching more than the preachers because many preachers have gone apostate. Many preachers have gone aside from themselves. The Bible says that this is what's going to happen. Second Peter, in Second Peter chapter two verse one says, "But there were also false prophets among the people, even as there will be false teachers among you who will secretly bring in destructive heresies." Even denying the Lord who bought them and bring on themselves swift destruction. In 2 Timothy. In the book of, um, in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 4. Verse 2 it says preach the word be ready in season and out of season. Uh, be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. Why? It says here, because the time will come. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up from themselves teachers. And they're going to turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. So now it's like nature has taken up the role, the mantle, if you will of preaching and is being done in the process of in this case of rifting the continent of africa in two <laughs> creating dozens more of volcanoes creating another type of ring of fire if you will what people call havoc is it's 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 a sign it's birth pains twins dear goodness i got another uh uh, scripture I'd like to share with you, Revelation chapter 1, verse 1 through 3. Again, I'm talking about Africa splitting in two. Major sign of the times, and I believe that it, it is symbolic of several things I already shared with you. 
Um, but in this case, uh, you know, in this, in you know, concerning Revelation chapter uh, one, verse one through three, is symbolic again of the proclamation of the testimony of Jesus Christ. It says here, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants things which must shortly take place. And he sent and signified it by his angel to his servant John, who bore witness to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ to all things that he saw. Blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written in it, for the time is near. The day of the Lord is at hand. Now we have hope concerning all that is going to take place on this planet. We need hope. Because the things that are going to take place on this planet, again, is going to cause men's hearts to fail them from fear for the things that will be, you know, for the things that will be happening on the earth because the powers of the heavens will be shaken. That's what it says in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 21, verse 25. When the earth has to take on the role of preacher, when the earth has to take on the mantle of preacher, it's not playing. It, it, it's, it's, it's an all or nothing situation. It, it, you know, Once the earth cracks, it can't mend itself back together. If you make a rock bleed, it can't put a, a band-aid on. It, it's, 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 a, it's an artery cut. Major jugular, if you will, cut. And so now the earth has taken on the role of preacher, and now we're going to see some stuff. It's going to be very interesting, I believe. Uh, you know, here we are in the year 2020, uh, and, and it's already, you know, you know, you have COVID-19 that's kind of been, it, it, you know, people thought that that was the worst of the worst. You, you better take off those masks and get some fresh air because things are going to happen on a whole new level. COVID-19 wasn't even the platter, wasn't even the bowl to put the ingredients in. We have hope. Come on. We have hope. I'm, I'm grateful. I'm, I'm grateful for the hope of God. This is going to make the whole world turn their eyes to Jesus. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I pray that when your knee bows that you are born again. Just because you bend your knee and say Jesus Christ is Lord doesn't mean that you're born again. It doesn't mean that you made it to heaven and you've denied hell. It doesn't mean that you've renounced your sin. It just means that, uh, you know, by default, you know that Jesus Christ is Lord. Because the Bible says that uh, uh, every knee shall bow. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, those in heaven, those on the earth, and those under the earth. The Bible says that demons believe that Jesus Christ is Lord and they tremble. That doesn't mean that they're saved, that, they, that, you know, that they've denied hell and are going to heaven. They, they tremble. Your knee will bow, but you can still go to hell. You can confess Jesus Christ is Lord. But you can still go to hell. We got a lot of false apostates, a lot of false Christians in the church in this last hour. That's going to be surprised come to judgment. And they're going to be cast into hell. Understand it's not God's will that any man perish, but that all come to repentance. This is why we preach. So how can you make sure you don't go to hell? Well, you must be born again. You must become what's called a new creation in Christ. All, all, where old things all pass away, all things become new, all things become of God now. How can that be done? It's only done by the Spirit of God. Well, what's your part in it? You must submit and surrender your entire life to Jesus. You have to cry out. Right now, we're at an hour that you got to beg God to save you. It's no different than if all of a sudden you were tossed off, you know, uh, uh, you know off a cruise ship in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. You're going to cry out to a God that you probably didn't believe in an hour prior to that. You know, you know, you know, an hour prior to that situation, you're going to cry out to a God you didn't believe in to save you. You're in the sea of perdition. Multitudes, multitudes are in the valley of decision. Now you may say, well, I'm not in that sea. Again, I, you know, I gave my life to Jesus. I'm born again. Good. I pray that you're preaching. I pray that you're ministering to somebody. And I'm praying that you're standing fast, therefore, in the freedom in which Christ has made you free. And that you are not becoming entangled again in a yoke of bondage. Hope. All right, so let's talk about hope. I got a couple of promises here to share with you. Come on. Go with me very quickly to the book of Psalm, chapter 46. Psalm, chapter 46, verse 1 through 3. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed. Come on, Africa splitting in two. <laughs> Come on, Africa splitting in two, but we have a promise. Okay? Africa splitting in two is preaching. Africa splitting in two is taking on the man to a preacher. I'm not talking about the people in that nation. I'm talking about now the planet. 
that continent. God is our refuge and strength. Okay, so let us turn our eyes back to the word of God. Churches are closed because of COVID-19. Okay, uh, look, I'm not moved by that. Let's turn our eyes back to the scriptures. That's study time. That tells me that God is saying, listen, I close. Okay, and, and, and please understand, you know, man, right now, we have a lot of people in leadership positions and mayor, you know, mayoral positions, governmental positions that should not be there. They're going to, oh my gosh, there's going to be such judgment for people. It's going to be crazy. They're, they're going to they're gonna be giving up their, their titles. Pro, former presidents are going to be giving up their titles. Current presidents, current mayors, current governors, current prime ministers are going to be giving up their, their, their titles come the time of judgment. Begging for salvation. Begging to be saved. If it meant to give up their whole house, now's that time. Maybe God will be gracious and merciful to you and grant you a new heart and give you the mind of Christ and give you wisdom and let you keep that, that seat and see if you can maybe earn your title as we're to work out our own salvation in fear and in troubling. That's somebody has an ear to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. you got to be a wise virgin. Not many people are wise. They're taking up the foolish virgin mantle and they're trying to buy in this last minute as if we're a stock market, as if the church has become a stock market. Oh, let's buy. Let's try to corner the market. You ain't cornering. You ain't cornering no market. Oh my gosh. I love God. I love his strategy. God's word. His, his strategy right here is the scriptures, not man's. All right, so we have again a promise here. Psalm chapter 46, verse 1 through 3. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling. God says he will help us. Verse 5, God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her just as the break of dawn. The nations raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice and the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. And the God of Jacob is our refuge. All right, I got another promise. Come on, even though the earth be removed and even though the mountains be carried to the sea, we will not be afraid. Why? God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Amen. Praise be to God. Thank you, Lord, for that. Perfect love cast out fear. Thank you, Lord, for that. Hosea chapter 10, verse 12. Hosea. Hosea chapter 10, verse 12 says the following. There's another promise. Sow for yourselves righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till he comes and rains righteousness on you. All right, so listen, you may have spent your whole life plowing wickedness. It says here, you've plowed wickedness, verse 13. You have reaped inequity or iniquity, which is sin. You have eaten the fruit of lies because you trusted in your own way and the multitude of your mighty men. Probably had some so-called strong counselors and you were trusting in them. But because of all that mess, atonement shall arise among your people and all your fortresses shall be plundered. But the Lord says, sow for yourselves in righteousness. Reap in mercy. Break up that fallow ground. It's time to seek the Lord. Time is up. I believe we're really in the midnight hour. And uh, you need to seek him now. It's awfully late to do it. But you need to seek him now. The day of the Lord is at hand. Folks, I want to say thank you so much for tuning in to today's Open Your Eyes People broadcast. As always, it is a privilege and a pleasure to bring to you all the word of God, breaking world news headlines, matching Bible prophecy. Uh, I want to invite you to visit my website at www.openyoureyespeople.com. Learn more about my ministry. We're actually celebrating 10 years of full-time evangelistic ministry here. And while you're there, I want to invite you to help support the work of this end time ministry with a donation. Your donations help make the work of this end time ministry possible. Maybe even become a monthly donor, a monthly donor, right? If you can do it, do it. Now is the time. Uh, it, it, you, know, it, it, you know, you don't have to be a monthly donor. You could just give as you're led, as you want, as you're cheerful, you know? When, when you know you're being led by the Spirit of God to give is when you're a cheerful giver. If you're not cheerful, don't give. 
I mean that. God is that serious about his word. God is that serious about donations, about giving. I say donations, but it's part of giving. He's very serious. If you're not cheerful when you're giving, don't give. Abstain. Say, Lord, I don't know. I have an attitude. I don't feel maybe I should. Abstain. Call it a fast. And then when it's time, you'll know it because you're going to feel good about it. You're going to, man, I, I have given. I, I, I love to give. I remember, I, 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 I have given to ministries, I've given to, you know, people who maybe waited on me in a restaurant. Uh, you know, I've given to, you know, churches in such a heart of like excitement. Like, yes, you know, and I don't ever want to talk about it. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't ever want to boast it because Jesus himself said that when you give and it comes from the secret place where the father sees, he himself will reward you openly. So I take that word very seriously. And so, but, I, but anytime I've given, it's always been cheerful. And if I'm not cheerful about it, I'll hold off. I'll say, nope, not yet. I'll just wait. And then I'll know. And then I get excited. Like, yes, I love it. It's fun. <laughs> and God is good. He reward, he'll reward it openly. So when you give, do it that way. Do it his way and you'll be rewarded. A lot of people, they're, they're waiting for the reward still. They're saying, oh, well, I've given to this church and this ministry, but I haven't been rewarded. But did you give cheerfully? Now you may have given because you know out of uh, you know out of impulsion because somebody you know cut maybe maybe riled you up and sold you on it but you didn't give cheerfully, okay? The fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, long suffering, gentleness, and self control. Then you're going to be able to reap what you sow righteously, fruit fruitfully, and you're gonna you're gonna reap an abundant harvest. It's it's a very serious promise, but it's the way it's the only way to do it. it it's the open door. It's the floodgate, you know? It's the window of heaven that opens that you won't have room enough to receive it, even though you could ask for some baskets so that you can receive all that he has for you. Come on. <laughs> so again, thank you so much How, uh, you know, for helping support the work of the end-time ministry. Give, donate, be a cheerful giver. Uh, until the next broadcast, may you all be richly blessed. Oh, if you want to mail me, you can also mail me at P.O. Box 218, Shirts, Texas, 7154. I love getting you guys' uh, you know, mails and envelopes and all that. It, it makes me feel really cool. Like... I'm loved. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you again for helping support the work of the anti ministry, mailing me and all that good stuff. Until the next broadcast, may you all be richly blessed. In Jesus' name, bye-bye.